talk a little bit about saws. Now, I'm going to work on the assumption that you want to be strictly hand tools. Even if you're going to be hybrid, meaning you're going to use a lot of hand tools and some power tools. There's a selection of saws that you're going to need. I'm going to start off with the ones that I think you would, should acquire first, and then we'll add to it right up to the point where you're going to process everything with hand tools. And I do that frequently. In fact, a lot of the furniture we build, no power tools at all. However, in saying that, you look around a regular shop and you've got, uh, if you look at all the different saws that you have that are powered, you have band saws, chop saws, table saws, all of those functions have to be done with hand tools. So let's start on this side, on the left side. Dovetail saw would be my first choice. And you'll may, you may notice that all of my joinery saws have the exact same handle. Big advantage that is that once that handle becomes fixed in your hand, then it applies to every saw that you pick up. And I think that's goes a long way towards uh, reinforcing muscle memory. So dovetail saw would be my first choice. Uh, you can use this for a lot of joinery applications. Next would be my fret saw. And the reason is that if you're gonna cut dovetails, the quickest way to remove the waste is with a fret saw. It's not something you can join to. You can only get about 98% of the waste out with that. You're gonna have to come in with a chisel and finish it. But it certainly speeds up the process being able to remove that 98%. My next saw would be my crosscut. This is a joinery crosscut. A fine saw designed for detail work, for cutting shoulders on tenons. It's the quickest thing that comes to mind. Fourth saw would be my medium tenon. And this is where you're going to kind of complete the absolute basics. If you're going to do any kind of mortise and tenon joinery, you're going to want a tenon saw, deeper depth of cut, a little bigger frame, heavier plate a little more robust for dealing with wood thicker than say three quarters of an inch, which is typically where you're gonna limit yourself on a dovetail saw. Now, as we progress, the question is, all right, if I'm gonna do everything entirely with hand tools, what else am I gonna need that will enable me to do just about everything I wanna do? Well, you need a coping saw. Now, this is a, a bit of a tiger to tame. It's not something that uh, I like, but if you're going to cut large radiuses by hand, you really don't have a choice, either that or a bow saw. But I think a coping saw is probably a little more manageable. You, you're never going to, I don't think you're ever going to get to a point where you can join right from this saw, but you can certainly get that outside curve to a point where you can come in and clean up a little bit with a spoke shave and you're good to go. I would then put a flush trim saw next. And this is a saw of convenience. If you uh, have plugged something with a wooden plug and you've got a quarter of inch of material to remove, it's a lot faster to snap off 98% of that with a flush trim than it is to try to plane it all off. Now you step it into your panel saws, and this is for when you're going to break down your large pieces of lumber. Mine are Lee Nelson's. I think that's the best brand you can, you're going to find right now. You're going to want a cross cut and a rip. Now my, my rip is a seven point. Um, it's fairly heavy. It'll cut fast. In fact, if I'm cutting a, a piece of three quarter pine, ripping it, I can rip it almost as fast with this saw as I can to go over, turn the table saw and set the fence and go through that process. So for semi short work this this is fast the next would be a cross cut now i chose a 12 point cross cut it's a little finer um, but it does a nice job and these saws are well balanced i really like them they've had some hard use of being around a long lot of my uh, workshops but good saws next i would put in my new uh, bench cross cut and this is kind of a general purpose saw at the bench for cutting pieces where you're getting close you're going to go in and now you're going to fit it with a plane, but this is going to get you really close. And it's going to be a finer cutting saw than what you're going to find with your full-size panel saw. And lastly would be my large tenon, or what I call it a regular tenon. And the simple reason that this is back here, where the uh, medium tenon is over here, the depth of cut, you're not going to need that much that often. I think you're far better off with the medium tenon, which is easier to control, for, particularly for people that are only doing this as a hobby or on a hobby basis, maybe a couple times a week. To develop the kind of muscle memory and the control with this saw to make it work accurately, it's going to take a fair bit of work. So that's my uh, cache of saws. I use all of them, um, and pretty much in the order that I just presented them to you. And my final bit of advice is spend the money to buy the best saws that you can find. The best saws, you only cry once. Every time you use them, it's an absolute pleasure. You get something that you think is a discount, you bought it too cheap, and every time you use it, it's a real pain. There's no fun in having to fight the tool. Keep them sharp, they work a whole lot better that way. But this is such an enjoyable process 
when you can actually hear what you're doing, you don't have to have all the um, eye protection, ear protection, nose protection. Uh, quiet woodworking, best way to go.